Today we're reviewing the new Anchor Powerhouse 767. And this is a high efficiency lithium iron phosphate power station that's designed to run your appliances if the grid were to go down. So first let's cover the basic features. The battery size is a little over two kilowatt hours at 2048 and they use lithium iron phosphate, which means it's good for 3000 to 5000 cycles to 80% capacity. And even after that point, you can still use lithium iron phosphate safely, but that's what it's rated to. Next, it has AC charging and bypass up to 1,400 140 watts. Next, the solar input is actually pretty good considering the size of battery. You can actually connect 1000 watts, which means at full irradiance with good solar panels, you could charge this up in only two hours. But for most people, it's gonna be about three or four hours to charge this with solar. But that's a million times better than a Jackery, which takes seven and a half hours to charge. Next, the AC output is incredible, especially for this size battery. It has a max output of 2400 watts. So we're going to actually put that to the test on the sales video. They actually show them running a 1,750 watt welder. This is single phase 120 volts. And if it can actually output that amount, that would be incredible, especially for this size battery and this form factor, considering the cooling of the inverter circuit, that would be remarkable. Next, the USB ports are made by Anchor and they make fantastic USB charging devices. So they actually give you five ports to charge your devices with, and it has a car socket for 12 volt appliances. So let's fire it up and do some testing and see how capable this unit really is. So first let's turn it on. I cannot seem to turn it on. This is such a nice looking unit though. The case is beautiful. It has a handle that pulls out to be used with the wheels. And yeah, all of this is just so nice. There's a reset button. Maybe we should press that. Wow, nothing really? All right, we're gonna connect it to an AC source and see if it will turn itself on because nothing seems to want to turn it on. I don't think I've had this before on a unit. This is strange. Let's not get our hopes up. We've been disappointed a lot with these types of products, as you guys know. Oh, there we go. We're at 26% state of charge. Let's give it a large load and see what happens. Actually, look at that, 1,400 watts charging. That was quick. Oh, that's annoying. There we go. Oh. Oh, that's nice. I like that one. This screen is nice. I actually kind of like this thing so far. Let's not get excited. Let's actually test it first. Now they say it can run a welder, but can it run a heat gun? This thing always trips the overcurrent protection. So let's see what happens. And it's actually doing it. That's incredible. Not bad. Let's get this up to 2,400 watts. Now I'm very curious. Oh, now the cooling fans are on. Oh, 2,700, you gotta lower it. Okay, that is crazy. Holy cow. This is the first impressive one we've tested in ages. Look at the size of this thing and it's running all of these loads. 2,356 with a 2,000 watt hour battery, that is nuts. If they build a larger unit, they're gonna dominate the market. This totally destroys the older EcoFlow Delta. I like this, this is great. If this is the future of solar, man, I'm gonna be happy. Wow. Let's see what voltage comes out of this socket. 13.4 volts. That might be regulated. I think they're using a higher voltage battery because this is not dropping in voltage at all, even with this massive load on the battery. So I think it's regulated, even though it's using lithium iron phosphate. Dang, they're doing it right. Wow, this is nice. Oh, look at that. I cannot believe how well it did. Let's charge it back up. What the heck is this? So for the next test, we were supposed to charge with solar, but I found something that I really dislike. They're using a hub of XT60 connectors in parallel, and this could actually create a shock hazard. If you connect a solar panel up here with the max input voltage of 60 volts DC to this unit, all the other ones become live, and these are exposed. This is why we don't use XT60 connectors for anything above like RC Hobby um, nominal voltage battery packs. And it's over 50 volts DC, and you can actually touch these. These are 
are exposed. If you have wet hands and you go through here, you could technically go through your heart and it's at a high enough voltage that NEC states is a hazard. So this is not well planned out. They need to have a different adapter with MC4. Also, this is not waterproof. These are not UV resistant. So whatever solar panels that they're using are for temporary connection only. It's not for a permanent off-grid installation, which that's a bummer. Everything else is so capable, but this is not. You do not want this. What would be better is an XT60 to a branch adapter for MC4 with five parallel strings. That way it's protected and it's not a shock hazard, it's waterproof and it's UV resistant and industry standard. So it's very strange that they chose these instead. Actually, let's test if there's continuity between all of these. I think they're all in parallel, but, but let's test. Yeah, there's no protection here. That's not smart. So are you guys following me? If you connect the solar panel right here and you touch this one and you touch this one, you can get shocked and it's enough to be dangerous. That is not good. Why would they do that? 60 volts DC? Come on guys. I know the electrical engineers thinking about this could have figured that out. I do not like that. Any exposed conductors in any system scares the heck out of me, especially for beginners. The people that are buying this type of unit, um, this could cause problems. Now something you could do is use a solar panel with a max VOC voltage open circuit of 50 volts. There's lots of 350 to 400 watt panels that have a max VOC of about 48 volts. So if you connect these here, you'll be good to go. But when they tell you 60 volts and they have exposed conductors, that's not good. So anybody watching this, use MC4 adapters to XT60 and then use traditional panels with a max operating voltage of 48 and you'll be okay. Anyways, let's move on. We're gonna connect AC power and then also connect solar power at the same time and see what happens. Oh, look at that. The max input is 263 watts. I think the battery's a bit hot. Let's see how long it takes until it starts charging at full rate. Let's see what happens if we add solar, if it can increase the rate. I'm only charging with 32 volts for now. Nope, nothing. It does not want to charge yet. Yeah, let's give it some time. Or we could disconnect the AC input and see if it charges faster off solar at first. Nope, now it's charging. 260 watts, so no better to charge from AC or solar when the battery is hot. There's a switch, it either charges off of solar or it charges off of AC. I wonder if you can do both at the same time. That would be a downside if you can't. But technically makes sense for the market that's buying this. They're either gonna be charging it for the weekend or backup, or they're gonna be using it with solar only, I think. Watch a limiting factor video. He watches my channel, this guy is awesome. And he should have a lot more subscribers. If you like batteries, check out his channel. Some really good content. Five years ago, the auto industry was skeptical to say Oh, the least. look at that. It just started charging. So after five minutes, it will start charging at full speed. Now let's add solar and see what happens. No, I don't think so, guys. Yep, it is charging off AC only. Let's try with a higher voltage. I have another power supply. So we got 52 volts. Nope, it does not care. Let's disconnect the AC. And now it charges from solar, there we go. Look at that, it's got a little PowerPoint tracker, you can watch it tracking. Five amps is the max output on this thing. Now let's connect the grid and see if it automatically transfers over. And it does, it turns off the solar input. Wow, so you get either one or the other and that's it. Let's charge to 100% and do a capacity test and see how well it pulls it off. Do you guys hear that? It is so quiet. Those cooling fans are barely making any noise at all. Compared to a Blue Eddy or an EcoFlow, this thing is much quieter. I don't know what they're doing differently here. This has an expandable battery? Yeah, it does. Why did they not send it out with this test unit? That's strange. We could have tested that out as well. That's a bummer. Oh, look at this. The charging efficiency is 96%. That's really good. Maybe that's why it's charging so fast because all that power is going straight into the battery. It's charging remarkably fast, actually. We're gonna have to do a long-term review because so far this is actually a pretty impressive unit. If these are reliable after a year of people buying them, I could recommend this over the EcoFlow Delta, the original one, because this is better in every single way and price. 
Like the output, the capacity, the input, everything is better than EcoFlow. And they're the leader, so this might be pretty promising actually. Now their solar panels are expensive. They did not send those out to me, but I would not. 200 watts, you get two of them. So 400 watts for $900? Yeah, absolutely not. That is way overpriced. So yeah, if you buy this unit, stick to this and then use an XT60 to MC4 adapter. And that way you'll be able to connect high quality panels that will last a very long time. Especially if you want to use this in an RV or a cabin or anywhere where you have a permanently mounted glass solar panel. As long as you do not exceed 60 volts DC, you'll be set. It would be so nice if they had a 150 volt input on this thing. That would be fantastic. Now it has an interesting power saving mode. It's not like other power stations. On this one, it will shut down once all of your devices are fully charged. So if you have lots of loads connected, then the consumption goes to zero watts. I guess it turns it all off. It's pretty interesting. And I just connected the Bluetooth and it was seamless. It worked perfectly. So let's get ready for our capacity test. It is now fully charged. And it's in bypass mode right now. So if we plug this in, it will not use the battery. And look at that, there's no consumption. Now when I disconnect the AC input, it will switch over to the battery. So we're gonna just disconnect that. I didn't even see a flicker. Was there a flicker? And it is running the load. This thing is dead silent. There is no noise coming from it with this size load. This is 469 watts. And it shows it on the app. I wonder if you can change if the inverter will turn itself on if it has solar power available. So let's check. And I'm not seeing that feature anywhere. So if you discharge this battery to zero and you have solar power available, you're gonna have to turn on the inverter's output manually. And that is very unfortunate. It's a very basic feature that all off-grid solar power systems have, except for these mobile solar power stations for whatever reason. They could easily add it in a firmware update. And there will be some in the future that will have that. And I would think that these companies would rush to have that feature to differentiate themselves to the others. But still, they have proven themselves to be very incompetent in that regard, specifically EcoFlow and Bluetti. It's a basic feature and they still don't have it. And now Anchor doesn't have this basic feature either. It's really unfortunate. But everything else on the app is very nice. I mean, I can't complain about this. 469 watts. Let's see if we can pull full capacity at the AC output. Actually, I'm gonna reduce this load because this is a little too high. We need to have a 0.2C rate. That is the industry standard. Yeah, that's not gonna work. Oh, this one's only 247? Actually, let's see if it pulls full capacity. I think it might. So 469 watts. Let's see if we can pull full capacity at the AC output. Oh. So if you take the capacity at the AC output and you divide it by the battery's capacity, we get 91.7% efficiency. And on the website, there's actually an article that talks about the type of transistors that they're using. And they're gallium nitride and they work at higher temperatures and there's less energy loss. But nowhere in here does it tell me the inverter efficiency. So yeah, 91% is good. Um, typically I like 93, maybe 95% but um, it is above 90%, which is fantastic. Also, we did a 0.25C rate test, and in this article on their website, it doesn't tell you at what rate these capacity figures and these efficiency loss figures are for, so I can't really determine anything. It's not in the manual either. Now, what still amazes me is how quiet this thing is. We are now charging at full speed in a low state of charge, and it is dead silent. Now the next test is long-term cycling. I'm gonna connect this to its own dedicated solar panel array and I'm gonna see if I run into any issues. And we should look for more reviews to see if anybody has any issues with these units. And over time, I'm sure people will find problems with this thing. In this review video with some quick testing, it's pretty incredible. The AC output is highly capable. If you're looking for a truly off-grid system where you're cycling with solar every day, I would not buy this. I would save up for an EcoFlow Delta Pro because it has a higher input voltage and it has more features. But as a standalone backup battery, just for some cell phones in your refrigerator, this might be fantastic. If you're not using this with solar, this might be the perfect unit for you. Now, personally, I do not like the XT60 connector for the solar input, but I'll have a cable available below and branch adapters if you don't wanna use this. If you wanna use MC4 instead, I'll have an option below. Cause this is not logical. Come on guys, you could have done better than this. 
Also, they might have firmware updates in the future where they can have some form of autonomy with the inverter output, so it will turn back on if solar power is available. And hopefully they'll have a larger model soon that's comparable to an EcoFlow Delta Pro with a higher PV input voltage limit, but we'll see. But as a standalone battery with some wheels on it, I must admit this is fantastic. If you're not using it for solar and you just need a backup battery, this is great. Now because Anchor is an established company, I would not be scared to recommend this product because I have tons of Anchor devices. I have Anchor flashlights, Anchor USB chargers, and lots of random cables and cords that I bought from them in the past. I think this will work fine for a long time, but I'm gonna cycle it long term to see what problems I can find. And I hope in the future they have a split phase output configuration unit with a higher input voltage, maybe 450 or 500 volts. That would be fantastic. But overall, exciting. They did a good job and I'm actually impressed. Um, typically these things fail pretty much every test I throw at them, so this was pretty good. So I hope you guys liked the quick review. We're gonna have more testing and maybe I'll find something juicy in the near future. When these products work, my videos become very boring, but when they fail, then it becomes really fun. So yeah, we'll continue testing this and I'll report back if I find anything bad. There will be an affiliate link below and also other links to my website and to the forum. If you need help with off-grid DIY solar, please check out my forum, it's free for everybody. And for forum members, we're gonna be doing giveaways in the future. I'm actually gonna give away free batteries and it'll be really fun. So yeah, please sign up for the forum and check it out if you can. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one, bye.